You are scheduled for a surgery in our hospital, so please watch this video until the end. My colleagues and me will accompany you during your stay in the operation room. I will try to describe the whole process and go to the frequently asked questions through our patients. My name is Dr. Al Kayat. I'm a specialist for anesthesiology. Well prepared is already two thirds on the winning track. The discussion with your anesthetist in previous of the surgery is very important. Your anesthetist need to have as possible information on your health to offer you the best way for your medical care. To ensure that nothing is missed, you will have a structured questionnaire. In this questionnaire, there are few points which should be answered by you. You can answer these with checking that or with filling it. If you have a point where you're not sure about the answer, just leave it or make your notice for that. Your anesthetist will go anyway through all these points with you once you are sit sitting together. The optimal time to have the speech with your anesthetist is depending on many factors. For example, if you are healthy and feel well at that time, only the day before the surgery is absolutely adequate to have this speech. On the other hand, if you have any chronic illness or you need to take several regular medication on your time, so, for example, if you have blood thinner or you have medication for your blood sugar, so it will be wise to have the speech a good time before you attend to the surgery. Some other medication, for example, like medication for the blood pressure, they will not make the need to have the speech in advance if you are well with these medicine so your blood pressure values are well and your family doctor or your cardiologist are quite well with that but for few chronic diseases it's absolutely necessary to have the speech a while before your surgery especially if you attend to our hospital from abroad examples for such chronic illness is like lung diseases or respiratory diseases, including asthma or snoring disease. Few patients have for this CPAP equipment where they sleep with this mask. It's absolutely necessary to bring such a device with you so that you can have it after the surgery during your stay on the ward. Another illness, for example, is all forms of heart diseases, such as heart failure or coronary heart diseases, heart rhythm diseases or heart, heart valve diseases. Even if you have maybe symptoms which may lead to um, a cardiac uh, illness, such as chest pain, especially if such a chest pain is coming through activity or it just project the pain to your arm. So these are quite important symptoms where they need to be clarified before attending the hospital. Other diseases like blood coagulation problems, on the one hand to the side of you have too much bleeding or you have thrombosis maybe in the history so these things are no need to be checked a while before attending to the surgery. A further need for the early contact to the anesthetist is the consumption of narcotics as a medication or generally 
drugs if it's in the kind of inhalation or other ways. So these are quite necessary things to be discussed in previous of the surgery and maybe before attending to the surgery in Germany. During the consultation with your anesthetist, your anesthetist will inform himself about your general health condition and after that he will tell you about all steps going through the surgery from the time where you enter the OR till the time where you get discharged from the recovery room. There are side effects which can happen frequently, but therefore they are harmless, such as nausea and vomiting after surgery, throat pain or shivering. Especially concerning nausea and vomiting, you can say that the anesthesia itself is not necessarily responsible for this phenomena. Much more, it's the painkiller which have to be given during the anesthesia. Anyway, we in Clinic Pelletage use a procedure of anesthesia which is quite very well known or the best known procedure to keep this side effect as small as possible, we use the so-called TIVA, the total intravenous anesthesia. And this procedure is quite known for the less risk for nausea and vomiting. Beyond that, we give all our patient prophylactic medication before and during surgery to reduce the side effect. On the surgery day, you will be requested to the operation theater. First steps in the operation theater, you will have an IV line that will be a cannula so that the anesthesia will be possible to be given inside. After the cannula is inserted and everything is ready, you will be brought to the surgery room. That's where we are now. In the surgery room, you will be connected to the monitor and your IV line will be connected to the syringe pump. In the syringe pump are the medicine which are needed for the anesthesia. Beside you, your anesthetist and a specialized nurse will assist him doing the anesthesia. First, you will have an oxygen mask in front of mouth and nose. During your breathing, the pure oxygen from there, the syringe pump will inject the medicine for sleeping. You will very soon go in a very deep sleep. Once that is done, a tube will be inserted through your mouth to the lung and you will get ventilated. And when the surgery is over, this tube will be removed. You will not remark neither the inseration nor the displacement of this tube. The medicine you got during the anesthesia are working so potentially and so short that they should be given the whole time during the surgery or the syringe pump. Once the syringe pump has been stopped, you will be awakened within a few minutes. In the recovery room, you will still connect it to the monitor and die special nurse will observe you during your time in the recovery room so that you are quite well in a good condition to be moved to your room back. In the next part, I would like to tell you a few things were our patient asking regularly for these things and tell you if that is true or that is only a say from somewhere. I will start with the first one as Many patients say that through the anesthesia, few brain cells get damaged. The answer is no. Anesthesia is a very similar situation to your normal sleep at home. Maybe the main difference is inside that you have a so high quantity on oxygen in your blood, which you would maybe never reach during normal sleep. So 
it's probably healthier. Anyway, it's not truth that any brain cells get damaged through the anesthesia. The next thing which we regularly hear from patients that I had many anesthesias the last time, that is probably unhealthy. Even that is not true. The highest risk considering the anesthesia is maybe the first anesthesia, because once you have needed an additional anesthesia, the next days or weeks after the first one, so the anesthetist know already about you and your general and anatomical conditions so he can be better prepared for the next one. The next say which we regularly hear from our patients is that an aunt or an uncle had general anesthesia and went quite confused the next days, probably weeks after the anesthesia. At this point, I would say it's a known phenomena, but that has nothing to do with the anesthesia itself. A typical question is how much will be the duration of the anesthesia? And the typical answer for that is the anesthesia is just a little bit shortly longer than the surgery itself. We have spoken about the fact that the anesthesia should be given continuously the whole time during the surgery. So we are able to stop it and steer the whole thing over the whole surgery that we are not who would decide how long would that last, but the surgery itself will decide how long is the anesthesia. I hope I was able to give you an overview over your journey through the OR of Clinic Pilotage having full anesthesia.